Hello. It's been more than 24 hours. It's been like a week. I had some other stuff to do. But right now I'm going to show you how to steam. And I'm going to show you what I've learned about the steaming process for silk. As I said before, I use the Jacquard Green Label dies. One of the advantages to using the Jacquard Green Label dies is if you don't have a steaming system to set the dye, you can use what's called a chemical dye fixative. And with these green label dyes, if you don't have the steamer system, you can soak you can soak your your silk piece in a solution a diluted solution of this chemical dye fixative and it will fix the dyes for you. The problem with that system is that if you use the chemical dye fixative to fix your silk instead of steaming it, you will lose some vibrancy and color. So I prefer to steam fix my green label dyes. And in addition to that, I will also chemically fix it once I've steam fixed it. Today we're going to steam fix this section of organza fabric that I dyed so that we can make silk flowers. And then I'm also going to steam fix this imaginary purple butterfly dress that um, I showed in my tutorial how to make. So we're going to do these two items. Now I have to tell you a little bit about steaming, the steaming process. If you've ever watched how uh, kimonos are made in, um, in Japan. They're steam fixed, but oftentimes they have a huge room that's just steam kimonos. And so they, they hang them on rails and they stick them in the steaming system and they, they get steamed in a room size steamer. I don't have that. Some silk painters have a little bit more money at their disposal and so they can spend the few thousand dollars that it costs in order to invest in a vertical steamer system. Even the most expensive vertical steamer systems, however, don't, I don't, I don't believe they have a pressure system. Um, my husband helped me devise a stove pipe type of vertical steamer system that he did with a teapot and it was a really ingenious setup. The problem that I faced is that when you're talking about a huge vertical column, when steam rises, the steam that arrives at the top of the column is not usually adequate unless you add pressure to the system. So what I'm saying is that if you have a, a boiling pot of water at the bottom of your vertical steamer system, the boiling pot of water is going to release steam at 212 degrees. It doesn't matter how hard you boil it it's still going to come out at 212 degrees. By the time it reaches the top of the vertical column, it loses some of its temperature. And so what I was finding was when I was putting the, the um, what do you call that thing? Oh, thermometer on the top of the column, it was only getting the silk to about 170, 180 degrees, which is to me not adequate. If you want to get really vibrant colors, um, you have to steam it a little bit higher. So I decided that I needed a system that was affordable, yet I could add pressure to the system and get it up a little bit, get the temperature up a little bit more so that the dyes fixed properly and I was able to preserve that vibrancy of dyes. When you use just the chemical fixative, you're going to lose some of your color. That's all there is to it. So I steam first and then I do the chemical fixative, sort of as a precaution, I probably don't. Um, but then I can make sure that it's clean, the water is clean of dyes, and when I finally wash it, the water runs clear and I don't have it. The, um, the, the guilt on my conscience of dye bleeding through, say, in a scarf on somebody's neck or whatever, I try to make sure that the water is running completely clear of dye when I wash it before it's sold. So we're going to do these two items, and I'm going to show you the system that I have set up right now. This is a fairly affordable system. Uh, what I have is a Miro 8-quart canning pressure steamer. And 
and um, it, this works really well. The problem, the, the one problem that you have with this system that you don't have with the big vertical steamers is when you've got a big piece like this particular dress, uh, you have to fold it and roll it. So you, you kind of roll it into a snake and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So I have this steamer system and what I figured was, I live in St. Louis, and so we're not exactly at sea level, but we're close enough to call it that. If I put a five pound weight, so when you get these steamer systems, um, you put a five pound weight on the steamer system, on your, when you're, on your pressure system, that brings the internal temperature up to around 240 degrees Fahrenheit. If you put a if you put a higher weight, like a 10 or 15 pound weight, you're going to get the silk too hot, and you're going to burn the silk. So you have to be very careful about burning your silk. If you set your even if you are ironing and you set your iron at high temperature, you're going to burn your silk. So you don't want to do that. You want to use a medium or low setting on your on your iron. So with this system and a five pound weight, I should be able to achieve about 240 degrees. And that is an adequate amount of temperature in order to be able to fix this garment. I also have found by watching other YouTube videos uh, that people who do use the pressure steamer, sometimes they will put vinegar in the solution in the water solution at the bottom of the, the pressure steamer. And that actually helps also solidify and preserve the vibrancy of the dyes. The problem that you have with adding, um, with adding the, the vinegar to the system is it becomes acidic. It doesn't necessarily affect the stainless steel, but any other types of metal, it will cause corrosion. Um, so you have to be careful about that. In addition to this huge pressure steamer system here, I have other things that I put in. I got this pressure canner at Menards in the canning section. And they didn't know where to find it or anything when I asked them and I saw that it was on, in stock. So you have to kind of look around. If you look up pressure canning and Miro, M-I-R-R-O, you should be able to find the product. In addition, when you get this pressure canning system, it comes with these uh, metal kind of, they're platforms to hold your, your canning. So you're going to use pressure canning for things like meats and uh, item, food items with a low pH. And so that's why you need the pressure system. I also got myself a cake pan. And the cake pan will hold my little rolls of, of silk when I've rolled them up in newsprint. In addition to that, you know, and I'll show you what I mean about the vinegar. Uh, so I just have a regular aluminum cake pan, and when it's subjected to all of that vinegar in the in the solution, it's going to start to rust. When it gets to this point, you should have thrown it away. I'm going to throw this away and start with a new cake pan. Um, Ideally, if you had another cake, uh, type of cake pan, perhaps um, made of silicone or glass, you wouldn't have those issues. But I just happen to have, this is what I have in my cabinet, so that's what we're going to use. And then I also have something that can be used as a platform. And you'll see what I mean when I, when I put the camera on when I load this, uh, this steamer system. This is the outside of a spring form pan. And this works perfectly because it fits in the steamer system. And um, you'll see when I get it going exactly what I'm talking about. But you need to have some sort of platform system. If you don't have like the outside of a spring form pan that fits, uh, you can use you can use um, cake pans or uh, spring uh, tin foil. Yeah, but you have to replace it more often than you know once every few uses, you probably have to replace it once every couple of uses because the uh, aluminum foil will also start to rust as well. So it, it gets nasty looking and everything, but you can cut the bottoms out and you can use them for a platform. 
you know, you just use what you have around the house. Don't go, don't go buy like a two thousand dollar steamer system, especially when you're getting started up, because you don't know if that's going to work for you. So, this uh, Miro pressure steamer system is eight, it's eight quarts. It's big enough to do my wall hangings as long as I, I roll them up and several other pieces at the same time. Um, and this pressure steamer system cost me, I think, a lot, about $80 at Menards. So it's really not that bad, you know. And you have the other stuff around your house, so why, why spend a lot of money doing buying a huge system? It's just crazy. So um, we're going to get started. I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. I'm going to show you how to roll these pieces um, and what I've learned based on the resistance that I'm using in these particular pieces so you can see how I do it. So this is, this is my uh, pot filled with, okay, maybe two inches of water and a quarter of a cup of, of vinegar. And then the next thing I do is I set my springform cake pan in there to kind of bring, bring your cake pan up from the bottom um, because you don't want any of the water to touch your silk. You don't want any water spots on your silk. Um, and so the idea is that the steam is going to pass through, through the pores of the paper, but actual moisture or the actual drops of water are not going to condense on the silk. So that's how, what we're trying to do here. So after I put this springform pan down to pry, kind of prop it up uh, above the water, I put the second platform down. That is where I'm going to set my cake pan, my brand new cake pan here. And now, because we don't want any of the water to condense on top of these um, coils of silk that we've got, we're going to put the tea towel down inside the cake pan. And then we're gonna put our coils on top of this cake pan. And you can. This is a big piece, so I'd be lucky if I could fit maybe two of these big pieces. Of course, I could have rolled it tighter, but I was struggling with it today, so I apologize for that. Um, so these will fit um, with not much room to spare, but if you had a bunch of these smaller projects like this, you could pile five or six on top of each other with no problem. And then I... Put a piece of tin foil on top. This is to keep the water that uh, condenses um, from from hitting the actual silk and getting water spots on the silk. And then I okay. And then foil. 
make sure it adequately covers the entire pig pan. And you can roll it underneath. I think that'd be good. in here. Top goes on. Make sure it's locked in place. And then you set it to boil. So I set it on high until it starts to boil and steam. And once it starts, steam starts coming out the top of this, uh, the pressure steamer, then Place this guy on and I set my timer for 30 minutes. Okay so um, here's the steamer and you can hear it's starting to boil. As soon as it starts to boil you'll see some steam coming out the top. Here it's starting to wheeze. Now, like I said, I have a gas stove. I have not tried this for an electric stove. I would just imagine that it takes longer to get going. So you probably have to back off on the temperature a few minutes before you actually stick the uh, Stick the weight on. Here we go. Here it goes. Whee! Okay, so it's starting to steam. We're going to turn it down to two. And we're going to snap this on, or we're going to put a pot holder in our hand because it's hot, hot, hot. Make sure it snaps on there. So now you've got your five pound weight on, and we can set the timer for 30 minutes and that's all it takes in this pressure steaming system it only takes about 30 minutes too whereas you have a normal uh, vertical steamer system it's going to take you at least three hours sometimes more and every depending on your system every minute or so it might let off a little bit of steam but um, right that way you know it's it's being pressurized and it's boiling so we're good to go. Hear it? That little wheezing noise. So this is my steamer system. I apologize. Uh, I lost my videos. I'm not sure. Yeah, I had some corrupted file systems. So my timer went off. I set it for 30 minutes. Uh, so it's now ready to go. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And I can't stress this enough. Um, even with the heat off, you will burn yourself because there's steam belt up in there. So you have to be very careful about pulling the uh, weight off. It's hot. The weight's hot. The top of the pot's hot. Everything's hot. When you pull the silk out, that'll be hot too. I like to pull the silk out when it's hot. And there's a reason why. When I use the new Jacquard water base resist, it comes out very plasticky. And when I use that resist, I'll cover it over with tracing paper or a very light grade uh, builder's paper that has sort of like a wax um, or hard coating on the outside of it. And then what happens is if you pull it out when it's hot, it'll stick to the builder's paper and you can pull some of that off without um, while well, it's still hot. Once it's cool, yeah, you're not going to get it off. So you just have to do your best to pull it out when it's hot and take off as much of the paper as you can. In this case, I used resist ads, so I only had to use newsprint this time around.
if you use resist add and not the Jacquard new water base resist, uh, you will not need to put builder's paper, tracing paper against the resist lines to keep them from sticking to everything. careful the steam is going to pop up at you, you burn your face. I will probably okay. I'm going to pull out my cake pan and be careful of the steam. If you have an oven mitt that probably works better. And you can see here my steaming rolls of steamed silk. my first piece. This was the um, this is why you need to keep it keep all the pieces of silk covered because you'll have dye leakage onto the newsprint. That's a good sign. I try to recycle the paper. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. And then this is the uh, steamed piece. So I'll let this sit for 24 hours. Um, either hang it or or lay it flat and let it sit for 24 hours before I decide to use the chemical concentrate and the dye set concentrate and wash it. Okay. And then this is the uh, bigger piece. I used cotton to dye it down. Normally I use twine, but I can't find my twine, so. See all this? This is a good sign. It's like unwrapping a big fat present that you wrap for yourself. Now some of the resisted lines will stick a little bit to the newsprint, but it's usually not too bad. Um, the new resist will stick to the tracing paper and or builder's paper, um, and you just kind of have to gently tug at it. There'll be some leftover, there'll be some residual paper. That's okay, that'll soak off when you wash it tomorrow. So 24 hours, let it sit, and then we'll pick up tomorrow.